westward. I say the day goes westward at the rate of one hour per time zone. Yes, sir. We are done the time zone scheme also. Yes. Now, if this is understood, let us have one more addition to the same idea. Now, see, what is the date today? 19th of August. And at what time today? 20th will start. At 12 midnight. So, everyone knows that at any given place, a new day starts at 12 midnight. Is it okay for everyone? Yes. I'll make my point that at any place on the earth, a new day begins at 12 midnight. For example, 20th August will start today at 12 midnight. Now, if this is understood, now please answer the simple question. You know a new day begins at any place at 12 midnight. But tell me, which is that location of the world where a new day begins the earliest on the earth? Which is that location of the globe where a new day begins the earliest on this earth? It has to be the easternmost place. Remember, the earliest beginning of the day would be at the easternmost location of the globe. And in the way we have divided the whole world, what is the easternmost location? It is 180 degrees, yes or no? So it means the IDL has another significance for us in life. International date time, which is 180 degrees line, it is also the line where a new day begins the earliest of the earth, yes or no? Because it is the easternmost location of my planet. Understood or not? Now, if you have understood all this, first I'll revise this point and then I'll ask you one very simple question. But anyone who understands the simple, uh, the basic points will be able to answer it immediately. First you have understood, earth goes eastward, day goes westward. This day goes westward at the rate of one hour per second. A new day begins at any given place at 12 midnight. And the fourth point you have learned is, a new day begins on the earth the earliest at 180 degrees location. Is it okay? Now, if this is fine, please answer this question, which is very simple now. I say, a new day, keep listening to this statement, a new day which begins at midnight at the IDL, I repeat, a new day which begins at midnight at the IDL, after how many hours it will have, after how many hours it will have its final exit from the earth surface? You know, a, a day comes and it goes, right? We get a new day after that. So my question is, a new day which begins at midnight at the ideal, after how many hours it will have its final exit from this earth? Very good. You are saying 24 hours. Don't you think if that was the answer, I would not have taken so much of time. <laughs> I am repeating the statement. See, you always get a wrong answer when you are in a haste to answer. Yes or no? So what is the learning for prelims? Remember, prelims is the difficult stage of this examination. Even some good students fail sometimes. Those students who are very good for pains and interview, they fail in the prelims itself. Only for the reason they make one or two errors and they go below the cutoff. And errors are because of silly mistakes. So minimize the errors on that day. And for that one rule is never ever give any answer in haste. In haste when you make commitment to someone. You know, the problem is commitment to an option and say yes. <laughs> or you should understand the idea of an agreement. Even then, there it was. So see, I always say, there are four options, never ever make any commitment to any option in haste. Because what happens, you say C is the answer, we will just go. Then your mind says no, B also will be answer. No? Then your mind keeps struggling. Because you have said, you have given commitment to C also. No? <coughs> so don't make commitment because you are, before you are 100%. <laughs> so see, everything must be related to life. Then only you have learning of the subject as well as life. Okay. So one rule for primary examination, I will always act rational. There. I'll 
take time to analyze the given situation. So anyone who did that, answer was? Answer to this question is what? <laughs> Don't analyze so much that you do PhD. You said zero art. How can a day be over without any time? Huh? Yes, please. Answer is 40. So I give a statement. This, this is the effect you have to understand. A new day which begins at midnight at the idea. It will have its now keyword of this question was final. final. It will have its final exit from this earth after 48 hours from its first appearance. Means from the moment it appeared, after 48 hours, it will have its final exit. Now, how many of you understand this? Only a few. Now, those who don't understand, no problems. I'll make it very easily understood by, by taking good illustration. So we'll go, uh, we'll just focus on what I say. Take my hand to be a globe and consider each finger to be a time zone of 15 degrees. How many time zones we have divided the whole world? But I have only four fingers, no? Please envisage 24 fingers. So total fingers on my hand? 24. 24. And take this finger to be this time zone. We are 180 degrees is at the center. So I repeat, each finger of my hand is a time zone of 50 degrees and the finger, this finger shows the time zone where at the center you have international date line. And this finger represents the next time zone on the west of it. This shows one more time zone on the further west. This shows one more time zone on the further west and 20 more such fingers, right? Now, let's do this. And the journey, and you'll get the answer of 48 hours. Now, you already know when earth will turn eastward, they will go westward at the rate of one one hour hour. Hour. so let's apply all what we have learned. A day which begins at midnight at the idea, I mean, a day which begins at midnight at the idea with the planet turning eastward, they will start moving yes. westward. westward. Can I say the day which begins at midnight at the ideal after one hour? Will reach the next time zone yes. because it's traveling at what rate? At the rate of one hour. So it travels to the west in the next time zone at the rate of one hour. So it in the next one hour it will reach here. After <coughs> one more hour it will reach next time zone. And as the earth is going further east, the, the same day will come in the next time zone after one hour. So can I say as earth travels eastward, the day which began at midnight at the ideal. In the next 24 hours, it will cover the whole earth. Yes. That is, traveling at what rate? Traveling at the rate of one hour per zone. So, in the first 24 hours, the day covers the whole earth. Once 24 hours are over, this day would leave which time zone? This time zone only. Because here it started, the first. When 24 hours are over, the day will get over only from this time zone. Remember here the day started? One hour, one hour later. later. So from this time zone, the day will exit after 25th hour. From here the day will exit after 26th hour. From here the day will exit after 27th. So it means exit process will start after 24 hours. Yes or no? Yes. But the final exit, the key was final. The final exit of the day would be after 40 hours. It means in general one can understand that at any given time in general there is a day which is covering the earth and there is a day which is leaving the earth. Yes or no? Because in first 24 hours a new day covers the earth and the next 24 hours it leaves the earth at the rate of one hour. Is that fine? So we have learned, we have understood like this rule now. Now let's have one or two more points. Today you learned West to east, I cross, I gain a day. East to west, I lose a day. Now, there may be some student who may come to trouble me after the class and may ask me that, sir, I understood your rule very well, but you didn't tell me that what will be my fate if I stand on the line itself. <laughs> there's some, there's some student who are to trouble the teacher all this. So, he, he or she may come and may say, sir, what if I stand on the line itself? 
Now, to such a student, my first counter question would be, what is the business in life you have to stand on the line? <laughs> <laughs> now, there may be a rigid student who may say, sir, you forgot about my business. Attend, attend to your business of satisfying the students in terms of the queries they have. So if a student comes with this question, that what is my fate if I stand on the line, then answer is that theoretically, my viewers, theoretically, you will enjoy two days in life. As per my question, you will enjoy 6 a.m. 25th December, as well as 6 a.m. 26th December. But we remember, why do I use the prefix theoretically? Because you know, in reality, when you enjoy, when you wish to enjoy, you need to be a part of a society as a whole, either on this side or the other side. At 180 degrees, you might say that I have two days of the year with me, but in practice, it is nothing. But if the question is asked in UPSC, so your answer would be that you have two days. <laughs> but it's more of a theoretical enjoyment, not the real one as such. Okay. So on but on the line international date time, we have two days theoretically speaking as such. Now one more point, and the last point which I gave before you write the notes is given in every book, and it is important for later our map references and details. <coughs> now be on the board for the last point. See here, just recall my previous lectures discussion where I explained that Greenwich Meridian was chosen as our zero degree meridian, one, because of the dominance of the English Empire, second, Royal Observatory at Greenwich was already in use as a reference by the sailors of the world, but more importantly, the reason which really turned the tables in favor of this particular place was that opposite arc of zero degree becomes international date right. and common sense required that this line, ideally speaking, should not be passing through populated areas of the world. Because if such a line across which there is a change of a day on the calendar, if it is passing through populated areas, it will become a nuisance for life. People will come, keep jumping the line, line throughout the day to change their commitments. <laughs> commitments. So, it was desired that we should have ideal in a way which is not disturbing humanity in big way. So scholars found, when you take Greenwich Meridian as zero degree meridian, opposite arc which was to become 180 degrees was a very convenient line because it was found to be passing through the mid of the Pacific Ocean. So the line Greenwich Meridian was chosen as zero degree because it gave us a very good choice for international date line also. Though it was very good choice of international date time, but it did create some problem. And because of those problems, <coughs> the international date time has been given two major deviations. It means theoretically the line called international date time has to pass through 180 degrees value only. But at two places, there has been some small deviation from 180 degrees value. Which are those two major deviations? The two major deviations would be something like what I say now. Now you all know, there's a place called Alaska. Yes. Alaska in North America was earlier a part of Russia. Russians <laughs> happened to sell it to Americans. So today Alaska is a part of US. Yes. And you will find south of Alaska, there, are, there is a group of islands which goes by the name Aleutian Islands. And Aleutian Islands are a chain of islands like something like this. Means there is a curved chain of islands. And the all islands are together called as Aleutian Group. And Aleutian Islands are part of Alaska. Alaska. And Alaska is part of US. US. So, what you find is when you draw 180 degrees line, these Aleutian Islands of US, they get divided into two sides. And when they come on two different sides of the line, so they will have change of a day on the calendar. And this can create confusions for Americans. So Americans wanted that for all geopolitical kinds of reasons, 
we desire that all these islands of one group <coughs> which are part of Alaska should be kept on the same side of the line. So my notes, like any other book, will give you that one major deviation of international date line is in the Bering Sea, and this deviation is with the purpose of keeping all Aleutian Islands of Alaska on one side of the line means to give them the same way. So broadly today we learn one major deviation is for which islands? And they belong to Alaska and Alaska belongs to US. Now you can explore this, uh, like has anyone come for Atlas classes to you? Did you have any Atlas class? Of no sir. One Mr. Amit will come, he'll start Atlas class with you. So you will explore these kind of details there or even I'll handle this later. But there is a separate person for Atlas Atlas. Now, so one major deviation today is where? Bering Sea. Let's see the second deviation. Do you see here? When the same 180 degrees line goes to the South Pacific Ocean, we find there are some small islands which get divided on two sides of the line. And imagine the people who belong to one community. If their islands get divided like this, will it be a problem? Yes. So, to keep their life easy, the World Society agreed for one more deviation in the South Pacific Ocean to keep those islands which belong to the same community on the same side of the line. And today, broadly, my notes will say same community, it meant Fiji. Fiji. And this is another example of Tonga. Details we'll see in the atlas, but broadly we'll say there are two major deviations of international date line from 180 degrees value. One is for Aleutian Islands in the Bering Sea, that's in the northern part, and second is in the South Pacific to keep the islands of the same community like Fiji and Tonga onto the same side of the line, right? Now these are the two major deviations, and we can explore that in the atlas for details. Now let's write all this in the notes. So preside a few points on international date line. First point. It is an imaginary line. First point on idea. It is an imaginary line agreed internationally agreed internationally now take a pause here. See, these Western people are very smart, very sure. They decide the things and later they say, agreed internationally. <laughs> In that conference of 1884, it is believed that you had representatives of only 27 countries. And they decided this for the World Society. And today they write in every literature that it is an internationally agreed line. Okay? So please complete this. It's an imaginary line agreed internationally which follows the meridian of which follows the meridian of 180 degrees 180 degrees with some deviations with some deviations to accommodate to accommodate certain land areas to accommodate certain land areas. Second point, a traveler crossing the date line, a traveler crossing the date line <coughs> from west to east, from west to east, Comma, gains a day, gains a day, and while crossing from east to west, and while crossing from east to west, loses a day, loses a day. Next point. One advantage of establishing. Next point, please. One advantage of establishing the Greenwich Meridian as the prime meridian, 
as the prime meridian is that is that its opposite arc is that its opposite arc is in the pacific ocean is that its opposite arc is in the pacific ocean full stop for the right in the same point the 180 degrees meridian next sentence the 180 degrees meridian transiting transiting the sparsely populated means less populated the 180 degrees meridian transiting the sparsely populated mid pacific mid pacific was chosen as the meridian was chosen as a meridian at which new days would begin was chosen as a meridian at which new days would begin <coughs> and the old days and the old days would exit and the old days would exit from the surface of the earth and the old days would exit from this surface of the earth. Next point. The IDL. Next one please. The IDL deviates from 180 degrees meridian. Deviates from 180 degrees meridian. In the Bering Sea. In the Bering Sea to include all the Aleutian Islands, to include all the Aleutian Islands of Alaska, to include all the Aleutian Islands of Alaska within the same day, to include all the Aleutian Islands of Alaska within the same day. And it deviates again in the South Pacific. And it deviates again in the South Pacific to keep islands of the same group. To keep islands of the same group. To keep islands of the same group. When you write same group, we will write it. Fiji, comma, Tonga, close in bracket. To keep islands of the same group within the same day. To keep islands of the same group within the same day. Now you write next point. Result as Earth rotates eastward, as Earth rotates eastward. The day goes westward. When you write day, you can write oblique time also. As earth spins eastward, the day or time goes westward. Next point. The new day first appears on earth. The new day first appears on earth at midnight at the IDL. The new day first appears on earth at midnight at the IDL. For so, for the right, for the next 24 hours, in the same point, for the next 24 hours, the new day advances, for the next 24 hours, the new day advances westward. around the world westward around the world put a comma finally covering the entire surface around the world comma finally covering the entire surface at the end of this period 
while we covering the entire surface at the end of this period. In the same point, next sentence. For the next 24 hours, for the next 24 hours, put a comma, this day leaves the earth, for the next 24 hours, comma, this day leaves the earth, again put a comma, one hour at a time, this day leaves the earth, comma, one hour at a time, again put a comma, making its final exit, making its final exit, <coughs> 48 hours after making its final exit, 48 hours after its first appearance, its first appearance. Next point. Since the ideal, next point please, since the ideal is in the middle of a time zone since the ideal is in the middle of a time zone hmm. put a hyphen right when it is crossed when it is crossed there is no change on the watch there is no change on the clock <coughs> there is no change on the clock Next point. Theoretically, next one is theoretically a long meridian 180 degrees, a long meridian 180 degrees, put a comma, it is both. Now just take a pause. I'm taking my example. It is both. 6 a.m. Monday and 6 a.m. Tuesday. Means there are two days. So, right? It is both 6 a.m. Monday and 6 a.m. Tuesday. That's all. So, this completes international date line concepts. This will do in the atlas because there are many other things which we have to know. Okay. You just now see here, there's a preliminary task for you now that you can go and check these locations. Okay. We'll explore this in detail. There are many other points also. If uh, I don't handle that because if I handle that, concepts will not be understood. First, understand the concepts, we have not many details to cover. Second thing, now see you have a huge work for yourself for Atlas. We have completed some important lines today. We have completed the equator of the year, Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, Arctic Circle, Antarctic Circle, Greenwich Meridian, and we have done the international data today. Now many students have a common question, sir, what to do in the Atlas? I'm giving you a huge task which will not get completed over months even. Every day devote around 15-20 minutes to one of these lines. For example, go to a continent like Africa and see which countries are being crossed by equator. equator. Which are the important cities close to the equator? Which are the important peaks close to the equator? Is there any lake near that equator, right? So uh, keep noting those kind of things. And I hope you understand, doing the same for the whole world will take a lot of time. So every day, 15 minutes for this static part of the world map. Then, whatever you get in the newspaper, any particular region, please explore that in the address. And to know more about it, go to the net and see the place which is in news for one reason, what could be the other reason there for a question in the examination. Means explore the same area with other kind of the reasons of importance of that place. Okay? So, you have Three things to see in the world map. The lines. Second, international news items. Third, whatever topics we teach. Very soon you will find, I'll be reaching to ocean currents of the world. So for that we'll have to see the address. When your Indian geography teacher talks about agriculture, soils of India or mineral distribution, we'll have a lot to do from the address, okay? 
So these are the kind of things you have to do in the address and keep working yourself and one teacher will come to help you on that also. Now you write next another very important topic for your examination plus important for life in general. Please write. Daylight saving time. In short, but calls it as DST. Is that it titled Daylight Saving Time or in short DST? Now, please don't accept writing anything. I take around 45 minutes to deliver this topic in a very comprehensive way. And best would be that be a good listener for the next 49, 40, 49 minutes. And at the end, we'll write the notes in 10 minutes. Okay? And I'll do it in gradual steps so that you understand the topic well. See, daylight saving time is a practice in many countries of the world. And under this practice, the country uses two different times in two different seasons. We Indians use one watch throughout the 12 months of the year, yes or no? Or do we change our time? We use the same watch, right? But there are countries in the world which go for using a different time in their watch in summer season. And this practice is what we call as Yes. Let's understand what exactly is a logic, what exactly is a benefit, and what are the other details of this practice of using two different timings in two different seasons of the year, right? At this moment, you just know that there are countries in the world which have a different time in their watch than the real time in summer season. Let's understand what is the logic behind this and what is your, uh, the Benefit the countries have and the other details. Now see, this practice of DST is related to the chapter of seasonality. And as I have already mentioned in my previous lectures, that I teach seasonality after a few lectures. I, I would have told you that I will be discussing five reasons for seasons of the earth, right? But <clears throat> I have already mentioned a few points on seasonality. <coughs> so, I give you something earlier in the brief basic concepts of the earth. And something is understood by your own experience. So, what I do is, though I am not covering seasonality at present, but I take up one or two points, which are very, very simple points, and you will understand by your own experience and school days knowledge. And on the basis of those simple points, I am going to establish the practice called DST. Now let us see what are those basic points about seasonality and then I will make the connection as I go further. See here, everyone in the class agrees with the understanding that seasonality is about changing length of the day. Yes. Summer is a time when the days are longer, winter is a time when the days become shorter. Okay. So when you will see that darkness has started prevailing earlier in the evening, it's a signal for us that we are approaching <laughs> So, change in the length of the day is what is a very good manifestation of seasonality for us. Is that okay? Now, second, I told you a few, uh, like in the, in the like third lecture, or second lecture, third lecture, agree, that there is a concept of circle of illumination. Did I tell this? Yes. I said, sun's light will always divide the earth into two halves. One the light half, the other the dark half. And the edge of the light half, which I also call as sunlit hemisphere, will be a great circle. And that great circle is called circle of illumination. So everyone knows in the class, circle of illumination, which is the edge of the sunlit hemisphere, is a great circle. Is okay? Now, you also understand by your common experience 
that a knife can cut an apple. Now, when I say apple in my class, always take it as a sphere, sphere right? Though it's not, but we are using it as a sphere for our classes. So everyone understands by common experience and our discussion also in the class that you can use a knife to cut the apple into two exact halves in n number of different ways. Yes or no? I repeat, a knife can cut an apple into two halves in many different ways. Is that yes or no? It means a given sphere like an apple can have infinite great surface. So today, what you envisage that our earth is represented by apple. So take earth and apple together and take the circle of illumination as the knife. So you will see as earth revolves around the sun in one year's time, this knife called circle of illumination will cut my earth always into Two wow. halves. But because circle of illumination is what? It's a great circle. So I repeat my words. You will see in the chapter of seasonality that as earth revolves around the sun in one year's time, at every moment of this journey, the circle of illumination will act like a knife <clears throat> and will cut my earth always into wow. two halves. But since the relationship between the earth and the sun keeps changing. That there are five reasons which I teach you later. Because of which you will find that as earth is going around the sun, the orientation of the earth vis-a-vis -vis the sun keeps changing. Since the relationship of the earth and sun is changing, so what happens is, circle of illumination cuts the earth always into two halves, but differently at different times of the year. So try to appreciate this, that you can run the knife through the apple in different ways, but still you can cut it into exact halves. Because you know, to cut the apple into two halves, I have to simply run the knife through the center, center of the sphere. So same way, Mother Nature cuts the earth always into two halves by the light of the sun, but it does so differently at different times of the year. So it means circle of illumination is acting like a knife, always cut my earth into two halves, but differently at different times. And that is what keeps changing the length of This is the correct statement for the chapter of Caesar. And if anyone is not getting it properly, I repeat one or two illustrations of my previous lectures and you'll understand it. So, leave it. You'll understand it better with the help of those illustrations. And we'll have the full details of the lecture of Caesarian. Take this marker to the axis of the earth. And imagine a globe around it, as I said earlier. And I am the sun. Now I'm going to show you that as earth goes around the sun, the relationship with the earth and sun will keep changing. I'll give you a few dates. Remember we discussed some solstice? Yes. There are two solstices. One is the winter solstice and the other is summer solstice. And there are two equinoxes. Now let's understand one or two of these and you get impressed with this point which I have just told you. <coughs> if mean the sun and if I take the date as 22nd December. Now 22nd December, where is the sun overhead? Over the tropic of Capricorn. And for we Indians it is winter solstice. Yeah. For Australians it will be <laughs> summer solstice. So see here, if the sun is here and earth is here on this side, it is 22nd December and the relationship of the earth with the sun is something like this. Imagine a globe here. Which hemisphere is towards the sun? Northern. <laughs> sun hemisphere. And northern hemisphere is away. The light of the sun will go onto the earth like this. The farthest reach of the light in the northern hemisphere would be up to Arctic sun. So imagine, I'm holding an apple in my left hand and the light is acting like a knife and that knife goes through the arctic circle, then goes through the center and cuts the apple into two halves. Can I say the cutting is in this way? Longer lengths of the parallels of the southern hemisphere would be under sunlight. Yes. Yes. It means Australians would have longer days yes. and December is summer for them. But in same December, shorter lengths of the parallels of the northern hemisphere would be under 
sunlight and we Indians will have shorter days and it is winter for us. Now, as earth revolves around the sun now, every day relationship of the earth and sun will keep changing. Every day the changes will be very small. So I show you change after three months. After three months, earth would have covered one fourth of its orbit. And if this is December, January, February, March. On 20th March, there would be a significant change in the relationship of the earth and sun. If mean the sun, earth would be like this. Here, the two hemispheres were not having same relation to the sun. Don't you think now, both the hemispheres are equally placed within the sun? And when is the sun over it? Right at the equator. Sunlight of the sun will go and cut the earth through North Pole at South Pole. It means light will act like a knife going through North Pole, then the center, and then through the South Pole. Can I say every parallel of this earth would get half length under sunlight and half length under darkness? And that is why scholars will call this day as the equinox. Equin is equal, nox means night. So, this would be spring equinox for the people of Northern Hemisphere. Is okay? Now tell me, is this clear to everyone that from December to March, the people of Northern Hemisphere have gained in the length of the day? Yes. Therefore, it means we are approaching summer. summer. And the Australians in Southern Hemisphere have got reduced length of the day? It means they are approaching? Yes. And next three months, from March, April, May, June, 21st June, Sun here, Earth will be so placed. And Sun would be over the tropic of Cancer. Okay. And our days in Northern this would be longer. And Australian days will be shorter. And here, after three months, it will be September. And we, people in the Northern Hemisphere, will call it as autumnal equinox. So please tell me, are you getting a feel that as Earth is going around the Sun, relationship is changing? changing. And the circle of illumination is acting like a great circle and is cutting the earth into two halves always, but it is doing so differently at different times. And that is the result called changing length of the day, called by us as Now, if this is understood, let me give you two or three final observations which we get as a result. <coughs> so, <coughs> I repeat, if you have understood this point that great circle, that circle of illumination is acting like a knife, and cuts my earth into two halves, but differently at different times. If this is clear, let's see some final results of this scheme. Now you know, for cutting the apple into two halves, the knife has to always pass through the center of the apple. So can I say, equator is the only parallel of my earth which will always get bisected with the light? Yes, yes please. So, if the equator is being cut always evenly, then can I say the length of the day at the equator will never change? It means equator throughout the year would have 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. Is that okay for everyone? Second observation. Can I say all other parallels of the earth other than the equator, can I say all other parallels of the earth would have even cutting? Only on two occasions. Yes. One, the March equinox, and the other, September yes. equinox. I repeat, the all parallels of the earth, other than the equator, will get evenly divided only on two, that is two equinoxes. One in March, the other in September. Can I say one more point, and that is the basis for BST now. Can I say all other parallels of the equator, uh, all other panels of the earth other than the equator will always get cut unevenly throughout the year except two days of the year. Yes. So I repeat now this point because this is what will give me a connection with the ST. So everyone now should focus on this point that all parallels of my earth other than the equator will always get cut unevenly for the entire year except for two days, yes. that is equinoxes. So if the parallels are being cut unevenly, the result would be that your summer day is longer than winter day. Is okay? So, summer day, every one of us know by our practical experience is longer than the winter day.
But the interesting result is, find this out, the interesting result is that in the lower latitudes of the northern southern hemisphere, the variation between the length of the day in summer and winter is very less. But as I go towards the higher latitudes in both the hemisphere, the summer day keeps becoming more and more in terms of its length as compared to the winter day. It means, those who are not getting my point, there is no variation of a day at the equator. But when I am in the lower latitudes of both the hemisphere, the summer length of the day is more than winter length of the day. But in lower latitudes, in a country like India, Pakistan, etc., the variation is not much. But when I go to the higher latitudes, middle and higher latitude, the higher I go into these latitudes, the summer day becomes much longer. It means in general, if I was to say, the result is that in the middle and higher latitudes of the world, summer length of the day is much, much more than the winter length of the day. It means higher and in the latitudes of the northern southern hemisphere, the longer is the summer. Yes, please. Summer day. Is that understood? Now, if you understand this point, that in both the hemispheres, in the middle and higher latitudes of both the hemispheres, this area and this area, if the summer day is very long, don't think a common sense will prevail in the minds of these people, that if sun is available to us for more number of hours during summer, then why are we letting this energy go waste? What is long summer day means? Long summer day means that these people in the middle and higher latitude in their summer season have a very early sunrise. Anyone of you who has been to some in summer vacations to some country in Europe would know the sunrise happens very early. So you have in this remember, I'm talking about summer season, and you know, if there is a summer in northern it will be winter here. So I'm talking about respective summer. So whenever these middle and higher latitudes are there summer, there is an early sunrise and there is a very late sunset. Anyone who has been a satellite Paris etc. would know that watch may be showing 9.30 p.m. But the light is so much which might remind you of Kelly's light at 3.30 p.m. And anyone who has gone there for first time and it is not looking at the watch but goes by the light of the day to have dinner, perhaps would miss the dinner. <laughs> because we Indians would feel that let the darkness prevail, then I'll go for dinner. But by the time the darkness prevails, restaurants will be closed. So, light, there is too much of light in those countries, even till late in the evening. Because sun is going to set very late. So, a common sense prevailed in these countries' people's mind, that if sun is available from very early in the morning till very late in the evening, then we should not let this energy go. Yes. We should organize our day in summer season in such a way that most of our economic, social and other activities of the nation should be accomplished, should be completed by using more of sun's light itself. Sun's light. I repeat the point because this is the base of DST. <coughs> Since these countries have longer summer day, so common sense prevailed in the minds of the people here that we should not let this energy go waste. We should organize our day in summer different from what we do in winter. And we should organize our day in summer in such a way that most of our nation's activities, whether they are economic or social activities, they should get completed, most of them, in the broad daylight itself. And we don't have to use other source of energy. So it means the practice which I am trying to make you understand today, DST, is basically with the objective of energy conservation. Right? So that they use for most of their daily activities of the nation the sunlight and rather than the conventional source of energy. Now, certainly the next question in your mind would be how exactly this practice leads to energy conservation. Let's understand what is DST further. Now see, if you have understood this point that they have more number of hours of sunlight and now they want to use it so that they don't have to use the other source of energy and for, that, for this 
they have to reorganize their day in which season in the respective summer season so what these countries do is before the summer begins just before the summer is about to begin they forward their watch 